making some dinner and it's so easy and delicious. I got some frozen wild cod, family size. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fillets in there. That'll be more than enough for us to eat on tonight and to pack my husband lunch with tomorrow. I've got some olive oil heating on a skillet right now. And I'm gonna throw in some green bell peppers, about half a cup. And I bought frozen because they were a dollar for the whole bag. So I got like three bags for $3. And the actual pepper was a dollar 59 or something. So green peppers, sauteing in the olive oil as well as half of an onion. And I'll throw in some garlic as well, but um, I'm gonna wait for this to saute first for a little while. I, I minced up like four garlic cloves, lots of garlic, love garlic. I'm gonna take a casserole dish and um, cut open these codfish uh, things and just rinse them under the water and put them straight in there into the casserole dish. The oven's preheated right now to 350. And I'm thinking I might move the phone. Drop my hands. So, These are all frozen. This is the part that's easy about this meal. You don't have to remember to thaw meat. You can just grab it straight out of the freezer and get it going. And my children love, love this dish. So it's really easy and it's family friendly. meal for dinner because it's so cold out. We've been out and about today and we have a fireplace but it's downstairs and we don't spend much time downstairs. I really wish that it was up here where we spend the majority of our time so we could turn it on and see the beautiful flames and just have it going, you know. been such a good day. We did some fun homeschool stuff, went to the library, and we got in all of our assignments, reading and all of that, and I only have really laundry to accomplish today, uh, so I've been so freed up to just hang out with the boys. We made we baked together, they drink some hot chocolate, they're watching Little Einsteins right now, which I love that show. Um, probably the only Disney show I can say that about. Huh. <laughs> Sorry if you like Disney. <laughs> um, so I've got the fish here. I'm gonna squeeze some lemon on it. And I always just cut my hand to prevent the seeds from falling in. And this lemon looks hilarious. It actually feels hilarious too because I used the zest from it. So like the peel is hard and weird. But it's still good. I'm gonna do a whole lemon. Hector loves lemon in our food. And then just salt and pepper on this fish. And I'm gonna add the garlic to that over there in a minute. You gotta stir it up first. Ooh, we gotta take out that trash. That's Ivan's job tonight. <laughs> 
little salt and pepper. Let's do some sea salt. I love olive oil with sauteing onions, green peppers, and garlic. That is what we call sofrito. That is the typical sofrito right there. Onions, garlic, and green peppers. I haven't put the garlic in yet. That'll add a whole nother level of amazingness. So I just stirred that and then just some pepper. That should be fine. Onions and green peppers are going here with the olive oil. And I'm going to add the garlic to it. Sorry, I have so much stuff on my stove. I pulled out our leftover rice. I pulled out lima beans for the kids because they love them and I'm just gonna give it to them with their dinner. And I pulled out this pasta, but I'm probably not going to use this tonight. So I'm gonna put that back. I'm boiling eggs for my husband's lunch that I'm packing as I make dinner and our pound cake is freshly out of the oven. So my stove is cluttered. And this is for the rice when I make rice because I'm totally making rice with this. So that's what I'll do now. I'll set up the rice. She's a regular pot. And I've been making our rice in our bone broth lately, which has been such a hit. We can barely like eat it unless it's made that way anymore. We're spoiled. It's so delicious. So I'll make two cups of rice tonight. And I've got two cups of broth, so I'll supplement the rest with water. And two and a half cups of liquid. Get that going, boiling. And this is empty, so I have to make new bone broth. And I'll make it tonight. Okay. Did I put in the garlic? I did. I'm losing my mind. So now I'm putting in a can of organic petite diced tomatoes. some salt to the water for the rice, about a teaspoon. And two cups of rice. until it comes to a boil, and then you lower the heat to medium low. So this tomato with onions, garlic, and green peppers, I'm gonna add some red chili flakes to it. Not too much, well, really your choice how much you add. I'm gonna do about an eighth uh, of a teaspoon. And salt, salt and pepper. Even though the fish already has it, you want the sauce to have it too. Not too much though, just a tiny bit of garlic powder. I don't use garlic powder instead of fresh garlic. I use it in addition to. <laughs> and maybe some oregano would be nice. About a quarter teaspoon, not too much. Because you wanted to have that spice, tomato, garlicky. And the oven's at 350. And now I'm just gonna pour this right on top of the fish and pop it in the oven, uncovered. And it smells so amazing when we made this last week. 
and so good it's so easy so i'm just pouring this on top of the fish in that casserole dish just cook up in there so wonderfully and it just looks normal you know I'm not doing anything fancy as the as it cooks it'll get all juicy and wet and delicious so that rice is going I'll pop this leftover rice in there towards the end of its cooking I'll warm these up for the boys I'm gonna get a chicken bone carcass and put it in my crock pot fill it up with water overnight I'm gonna wash these dishes and I'm gonna make broccoli for my husband and I, well really for all of us I just want to finish up these lima beans so I'm gonna saute some broccoli in olive oil salt and pepper and let's see what all right so everything's clean I just lowered the heat on the rice because it came to a boil um, to medium low on my stove that's two it could be three on yours or just medium low I'm gonna grab my crock pot and since we're out of bone broth we have to have it at all times I'm gonna make some and I'll just leave this on the counter all night on low making the bone broth so gotta get some bones probably in the deep freeze Here's some. So I just put them in the, after I make whole chickens, I always save the bones and put them in a uh, Ziploc bag with all the sauce, the juices from the chicken too, because that adds so much. That's already have some, that already has some bone broth in it. Um, so I don't like throwing it away. And it adds so much delicious flavor to the bone broth because it's got all the seasonings and the fat. So I literally just put that frozen chicken bone carcass in there and sorry I used the word carcass I think it's funny <laughs> but I'm sure some people are like ew stop that and I'll just fill this up with water and then put it on the crock pot on low and I'm gonna show you how I make my broccoli it's kind of embarrassing because it seems so like nothing special but everybody that eats it is like what did you do this is so good and I'm like nothing it's just nothing it's special you know so I'm just fill it up with water and that's it leave it here covered on low for the whole night probably really till like tomorrow afternoon I won't strain this um, probably around this time one last one okay okay go ahead and switch it yes it is but we're gonna wait to have it for dessert okay you can do one wild kratz and then turn it off when it's over. So I'm gonna get a big pan. Okay, just pause it. Coat it with olive oil. Change it, change it. He doesn't know how, baby. You've got to help him. Ivan, instead of yelling, go do it for him. And I have this huge frozen broccoli bag. You need to teach him. Stop talking and yelling and just walk over there and kindly teach him, brother. Kindly teach him. No, wait for me. And I just dumped as much broccoli as we're gonna eat into the pan with the olive oil. And that's it for that part. <laughs> And I barely use any seasoning. I put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder. And I put it on now when it's still frozen. The kids call this their favorite broccoli. And every time I make it for guests, they're like, this is awesome. Like how funny. And that really, really is it, you guys. It like steams, but because it's frozen, as it uh, defrosts, that water becomes the what steams it. And then I do this to like 
coat it with the seasoning and with the olive oil and I just leave it there. <laughs> So in a few minutes, I'll stir it and stuff, and then I'll cover it again, stir it and stuff. Really, I don't stir it. I just shake it the whole time and just leave it covered until it's bright green, and I can tell that it's tender throughout, but not like soggy or mushy. I'll show you. You can see the steam swirling in there as the broccoli defrosts and it becomes steam. So really, it's like steaming, but straight into the olive oil. I think that's what makes it so yummy. And how did I learn how to do this? I don't know. I just did it one day. <laughs> and I've always made it this way. Just because. I hear it sizzling, so it's time to shake it. That's it. <laughs> so it's still not ready, but I wanted you to see. I could start, I'm smelling the actual scent of broccoli now. But there's still like a little bit of whiteness right there, which is probably still frozen. So it's cold and a little crunchier than I want it. I don't know. So really I do that like every three minutes or so. And you want it like on medium, not too high in heat, because then it'll burn the outside and um, probably by the time it's defrosted and tender, the outside will be too burnt. Okay, a great way to warm up leftover rice to where it comes out like if you just cooked it is right now this rice is ready to be turned off and left here for 10 minutes to steam. So before I turn it off, I'm just going to dump this right in on the top of the new rice, close it right back up, and then turn off the stove. And by the time I'm ready to serve, that cold rice will be warm and steamed as if we just made it today. Um, which is really convenient. I don't have to use the microwave and change the genetic makeup of the food. <laughs> and if I did choose to use the microwave, um, it never comes out as yummy and fresh. But the closest way to get it that way in the microwave is to leave it just vented a little bit in whatever container you have your rice in. I consider my broccoli ready. It's green and bright. It's starting to look like little particles of the florets are coming off, which means it's really tender. I'm going to leave it on the stove top, not on the heat, and not completely covered because then it'll keep on steaming and then turn that ugly green color that you way overcooked it. I'm using the microwave for the lima beans. The rice is just sitting there steaming and the fish is still cooking. So. Dinner's ready, as far as what I need to do. I got everything set up for my little boy. He's um, setting the table tonight, so I always grab the placemats and put them on the table, but still not set up so he can set them up. I grab all the napkins and utensils and all the cups and set it up for him so he can just come over here and like grab the utensils and napkins and go put them the way he's supposed to and then take all the cups to the table. They're still learning, but they do such a good job and I just like to help them with that initial setup step so that they can get into the habit of it and then eventually he'll be able to do all that on his own. So I'm gonna go finish Wild Kratts with him. Okay, so dinner's ready. We've got yummy rice, yummy broccoli, some lima beans in the microwave that are not worth showing. They're just leftovers and dessert. And then we get the fish out of the oven. And the delicious fish. And this smell is so familiar to me from my childhood. I'm convinced it's gotta be just the fishy, the fishy smell with the spicy tomato smell mixed together. Cause it reminds me of camarón enchilado, which is like this yummy tomato based, white wine based sauce that we would cook lobster and shrimp in. And it was a little spicy, it was so good. So that smell is just very familiar to me. We're gonna eat. I know I made a lot of things on this video, but hopefully it was not um, confusing and um, a new easy recipe for you to try.